What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another video with me, Ben Rogjan, aka the Seattle Data Guy. Today, we're going to do something that I've been meaning to do for a very long time, which is actually finish a data engineering project for you guys. Now, we're going to be restarting uh, all over again, but I already have a very straightforward plan in terms of what this project is going to be. I'm going to outline it here shortly, but let's talk about it. So let's start with the data source. The data source for this project will be Predictit's uh, data source, which if for those of you who don't know what Predictive is, it's basically a marketplace that you can kind of essentially bet on political things. Like who will be the presidential nominee in 2024 for the Democrats, which currently based on my screen, uh, Joe Biden is ahead of Gavin Newsom. What I enjoy about this specific data set is it's nested. So that's going to be interesting to work with. Now that we know the data set, let's talk about the ingestion method. So I'm just gonna use a Python operator in Airflow and we're going to run it in MWAA, just to make it easier for everyone out there who's just getting started. I'm not gonna make this super complicated and, and make you set up Airflow in more of your own personal way so it can scale. Let's just use MWAA because that also gets you ready to use something like AWS. But if you would like to use GCP instead, you can use Cloud Composer, it's basically the same thing. All right, so that's gonna take care of basically the ingestion point of how we're going to pull in this data. From there, we're going to use S3 to kind of store the raw data. And then from S3, we're gonna take that data and put it into Snowflake. So that kind of takes care of, you know, raw storage as well as then analytical storage. Once we've done that, we're going to take Snowflake and we're going to use their tasks to kind of do some sort of transforms. I think this will be interesting because we could just use Airflow or maybe DBT to run some sort of transform, but I think it's interesting to see Snowflake and see what it could do. But if you'd like, I'd also say try out DBT. This is a great place to kind of try out an aggregation or a model that you could be developing on it. From there, we're gonna use Tableau likely to do some sort of visualization. And I'm trying to think if I'll use Twitter to do uh, some sort of maybe post out on like a bot. And honestly, I haven't actually thought about questions I wanna answer with this data just yet. Yeah, boo me. If you want to go check out this data and maybe See if you have any questions and feel free to post them in the comments below. And if I happen to like them, I'll include them and, you know, put a mention out to your name for saying, hey, thanks for the question and here's the answer. Now, really quickly for the video breakdown, here's how it's going to go. For this first video, what we're going to do is we're going to pull the data from predict it, store it into S3, and then just basically push it into tables into Snowflake. That's it. It'll be real clean. Basically the extract and load portion. After that, over the second video, we'll be kind of taking that data and doing some transforms. This is going to be necessary because I need to kind of store data for a few days to see if there's any changes for a lot of these values. I'm going to need probably two or three weeks to actually run um, these extracts to see kind of if anything changes over time. So that's going to be video two. And then video three, we're going to do something with it. Again, if you have some questions, please post them below. So with that, let's dive into the code. So let's first dive into this basic function that we're creating um, just as a JSON scraper. We're going to be basically using it to scrape data from a JSON API endpoint. So it's going to pull that data down and then load it into S3. In the future, you could definitely use an S3 uh, hook, which I'll kind of put a quick documentation about that up here for a second, as well as um, an S3 operator uh, to essentially manage some of what I'm doing here. But I wanted to keep this very clean and simplify how we're loading data um, into S3. So for this function, all we're really doing is taking data using this response uh, variable to capture the request data that we're using with this URL that we're passing in here. And that's just representing this predicted API endpoint. We're also going to pass in um, a file name as well as a bucket. Again, we're not using the S3 uh, just yet. From there, we're going to take that data and basically convert it to JSON. Because if you look at this URL, you're really just pulling JSON. And then from there, uh, we're going to take that and dump that data to a file. And that's it. We're going to then load it in test three, but let's just kind of run this and we're going to look at the data really quick. All right, so let's really quickly run this file. And you can see it's very fast. The data is not huge. It's a little bit, but it's not huge. So it's, it's uh, pulled. Let's go check what this data looks like. So what you will see about this data is that one, it's got some nesting here where it's got contracts uh, inside of essentially a market. And this ID is what we're going to use to kind of track data over time because we're going to need to pull this data over multiple days or maybe like every few hours just to see if there are changes in contracts. You also get a human readable name here. So for example, which party uh, will win the 2024 election? Uh, and then again, some data points here in terms of like in-out prices, best of last price, et cetera, um, for different um, essentially categories. And that's really all this data is. Again, we're going to connect all this data here um, later in the next video. For this Airflow version, for those of you who are unfamiliar with it, uh, what you'll start 
to see, here is this default args. This just defines a lot of key parameters such as owner, email, so where exactly should things go if something goes wrong kind of information. You'll see here, I basically just left it as what I copied from Airflow, but this is really important when you start getting in production because you need to know who owns what. And it also lets you programmatically do that rather than do it through like some sort of UI that isn't version controlled and isn't tracked. So that way you can't just like stick some uh, task onto somebody else uh, and no one knows that you did it. This will make sure you track who is doing what changes in, in those default arguments. Then you'll see again, this uh, JSON scraper function that we have passing in those three variables. And then from there, we have the actual DAG. So this DAG here with DAG is what I'm actually defining as the DAG. Uh, what you'll see here, this raw predicted is the name. Generally speaking with this name, what I will do is call it maybe raw or stage or maybe some sort of prod and then put it with the data source that it's coming from and then add in something that references an entity like raw EMR patients. But because predicted doesn't really have entities, it just has kind of one data set. We're just calling it raw predicted. In the long run, it's better to have some sort of entity reference because then it's easier to know what the file actually represents. And then you'll see we've called out those default args as well as some other uh, parameters here. I've left description blank, but in the future, in production, again, you should have some clear description of what this is so that future people know, as well as things like start date. And if you should run this file in catch up mode or not. Also tags are important because as you work in larger organizations, it lets you denote things like project or team um, very clearly using tags. From there, you're gonna see two tasks. Uh, one is this first one that we kind of are referencing that JSON scraper, but you'll also notice this dummy uh, operator here. And you'll see it just says ready. Now I generally always have a ready task. The reason being is that sometimes you need to reference the last task of a, another DAG uh, when you're actually trying to say, you know, what depends on what. Now, if you're just relying on the last task name to be whatever it happens to be, you then in the future will need to go into that file to figure out what it was. Cause it could be anything, right? It could be this, this extract predicted. It could be extract Salesforce, whatever. You have no way of knowing. But if you're consistently always ending it the same way with let's say a ready uh, task, you always know how it ends. You don't need to go into another file to figure it out. You can just know that, hey, raw predicted dot ready is the last task. And I know that I can import that into another DAG so I can chain some DAGs together. So that's all that this does. And then above, we've just referenced this Python callable function, JSON scraper, which we defined above and passed in the same parameters that we did uh, before in this file here. And that's really it. So now let's go into MWAA and see how this all looks like. So this is the MWAA UI that you'll get to. Once you've set it up, that in itself is its own, you know, five to 10 minute video. So I didn't want to go into it here. It's pretty straightforward. I think the most complex part is understanding what's going on VPC wise. Other than that, this is pretty straightforward. What you will notice is as you're setting it up, you need to define a DAGs folder as well as possibly optional, a requirements and plugins file. We're gonna dive into the DAGs folder, but the requirements file essentially just defines some sort of library requirements.txt file that you're going to include when MWAA runs. Um, I didn't need it because I have no libraries that I'm using outside of what MWAA expects. Same thing with plugins. It's if you've built a custom plugin and you need to include it. But if I jump into this DAGs folder, you'll see raw predict it. And basically this is all you need to do. This is how you productionize code. You load it into this S3 file. You can obviously do that through GitHub actions. You can also just upload it here if you're doing a test example like I am. But if any of you want to go that next extra step, that's how you do it. You take GitHub Actions and make sure they post uh, to this uh, S3 bucket. So if we go to essentially MWAA, you'll see that raw predicted is already here. I've already um, set this up and tested a few times. So if I were to hit run, trigger DAG, you'll see it starts running. If I rerun this, you'll see it's successful. And now if I go into that bucket that I referenced before for data MVFR, you'll see this data has loaded. So 1859, this data has loaded and we're ready to go. Again, we're gonna have to kind of load this a few times. So I'm going to set it up uh, differently in terms of naming conventions here. It shouldn't be predicted markets. It should be something that lets me know what day it was pulled. But now you know how to pull data into S3. If you have any questions, please post them below on this specific data set. I'd love to include maybe one or two of your questions. Other than that, thanks so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Thank you and goodbye.